Today I'm going to build my ambitious project to date. I'm going to take all of this and turn it into this. A 24 volt, 4,000 watt, 10,000 watt hour, split phase, low frequency, pure sine wave, DIY power station. The little green monster. So today I'm going to be showing you all the steps on how I made it. And if you're interested in watching the video of the details of the components inside of it, click right here to watch part one. But here we go. I'm going to show you how I built this monster DIY portable power station. So to build this power station, the first thing you got to do is build a box. And then to build your box, the first thing you got to do is figure out how big of a box you got to build. Um, I am building a two foot by three foot box. I've already kind of measured it out. And I know that'll fit. So um, I actually was able to luckily find some wood I had laying around that is four feet by three feet. So I'm just gonna have to make a couple of quick cuts and I'll have the wood for my box. Also, I have these casters that I'm gonna put on one end because this box is gonna be heavy. These batteries are heavy, the inverter's heavy, everything's gonna be heavy. And I'm gonna have the casters on one end and a handle on the other end. Now this isn't a woodworking channel, so I'm not gonna show you a lot of steps on that, but basically you gotta build a box, find a box, fabricate a box, whatever you wanna do, you're gonna to have to put this in something. So I'm gonna put it in a wood box made out of plywood, uh, and then I'm gonna lay everything out inside that. I'm gonna cut the holes for the fans and the switches and everything. So I've dropped in my two components, the batteries and the charge controller. And over here, you can see that's where the remote for the charge controller is gonna go, and that's where the 120 outlet is gonna go. I'm not going to wire up 240 right now. That's something I can do later. As you can see, I've placed the inverter. It's not secured, it's just placed right there. And then I have my two batteries. This one is a 24 volt that's already built. These are two 12 volts that I'm gonna put in series to create a 24. And then both of these will have a fuse and will be in parallel with each other. So I've got them glued so they don't move. And once that sets up, um, I'll start putting in the bus bars and start wiring this up. Right here is all the negatives for the um, batteries and they'll go to the negative bus bar. And then here is the positive. That'll be the positive of this one. Of course, it'll be, have a fuse on it. And then over here, right here is gonna be the new positive for that battery. This battery, again, is still two 12 volt batteries and I have not put them in series yet. Well, next up, I'm going to install my fans. And on the fan, I'm gonna install this one so it blows air out. And the one on the other side is gonna blow air in. So I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little thing that says the direction of the airflow. So I'm pointing that out. So there's that one. I'll do the same exact thing on the inflow, except the airflow will be the exact opposite. But mounting them is the exact same thing, just like that. And then this is where I'll wire it up, but I'll be doing that a little bit later. So there I have the inflow mounted. Exact same idea, except of course the airflow is pointing in, not pointing out. So I got my two fans installed. On to the next. So the last major component I have to do is my charge controller. I'm installing it upside down because I won't be able to reach the wires if it's the other way. I've done this before on other charge controller installations, so I'm not too worried about this working. Um, I have a piece of wood underneath it just so it's not flush with the bottom so there won't be airflow underneath it. Remove the piece of wood. So now there's airflow underneath it, and that is my major components charge controller, inverter, batteries, and fans. Everything else is just pretty much wiring, bus bars, fuses, stuff like that. And 
So I just installed the front panel and as you can see my battery switch is not centered because I actually put it on before I cut the board fit so it's off by a little bit but so be it. My woodwork is also not that great but again this is not a woodworking channel and anybody who's out there who's crafty can probably build a better box than this but this box will work fine for me. Also this plywood is not that thick so I actually put some boards underneath it to support the weight. So now for the fun part, and actually the easy part, and that is wiring it all together. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking the electrical tape off of my wires. One thing you gotta watch if you put electrical tape on these lugs is it can make them dirty, and get them sticky, and it can uh, lower how conductive they are, so it's best to uh, clean them afterwards after you take this tape off just to make sure you get a good connection so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them these off take this tape off clean them up and I'm gonna mount the negative bus bar right here because these are black which means they're gonna be the negative then I'm gonna hook the negative of the charge controller the negative of the inverter all the negatives will go on this negative bus bar. So I've wrestled the duct tape off and I had that on just to keep them up. So now I'm going to connect these. Let's see exactly where I can put this bus bar. So those are just on enough that I can place the bus bar. There, bus bar mounted, nice and tight. Got my batteries hooked up for that. Now, of course, these are not tight. This is just for placement, but these were the main wire, so I wanted to make sure they fit. So now I'll run one from one of these to my inverter and then to the charge controller. So now I'm going to run a heavy gauge wire from my bus bar to my inverter. This is just for placement. I'm going to swing this around, hook it up to the inverter. Next up, I'm going to hook up my charge controller. I'm going to take this smaller wire. As you can see, it's a much smaller gauge because there's not as much current going to be flowing from the charge controller into this, so you don't have to use a heavy gauge wire. In fact, a heavy gauge wire won't fit in your charge controller. Look at the specs in charge controller, sometimes it's six or eight gauge. So you gotta make sure you don't have too big of a wire. So I'm just hooking this up here. I'm gonna be adding more stuff to this. And again, I haven't tightened down any of these. I'm gonna come over here. Make sure these ends have been twisted. On the charge controller, you're gonna have an icon that says solar battery load of course positive and negative on each one of them we're going to take this wire and we're going to stick it on the one that says battery on the icon for the negative of course you slip it in under this little gate take a screwdriver it's a Phillips head screwdriver and then just close it down on that gate that gate will close down on the wire and secure it nice and tight so now the last thing to go on the negative bus bar is the wire that goes to my 24 to 12 converter. Now I've already installed this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take back this one off and I'm going to put this guy on top of the one that goes to the charge controller. Small wires always go on top. I'm not going to tighten that down yet, just there to hold. And then this is a very small wire, a little 
little connector on it that'll slide underneath on the 24 volt side on the negative it just slides underneath and gets secured with a screwdriver so this fan controller will hook up to the 12 volt side of this unit here so next up I'm going to take these two 12 volt batteries hook them together so they're in series so I have two 24 volt batteries in parallel to run the system if you want to know why I'm doing that watch part one where I explain why I'm doing it that way I'm going to just take the negative of battery one and hook it up to the positive of battery two and then the positive over here will be the new positive and of course the negative will be the new negative so the next thing I'm going to do which I've already done over there is put these terminal fuses on each battery and that's because these are going to be in parallel when you put batteries in parallel you have to have a terminal I gotta be careful from now you gotta have a uh, fuse on them in case something happens it won't rush all the current so that is what I did there and that is what I'm doing here so now that the fuses are on the next step is to run these to the battery switch so now I'm going to hook up the other battery to the battery switch one thing I want to point out is notice the different sizes this is 3 8 this is 5 16 you want to make sure your battery cables match the size of what you're putting them on as close as you can for example I could put a 3 8 over this but it wouldn't be snug and of course a quarter inch wouldn't fit but you want to make sure that your wires are as close to the size of the terminal as you can make them so now I'm just going to run this down to the battery switch and both batteries will be hooked up to the battery switch So real quickly, I ran a heavy gauge wire from the output side of the battery switch over to the positive of the inverter. So next up, I'm going to hook up the positive of my 24 to 12 volt converter to the positive of the 24 volt battery here. But I only have a black wire. So what I've done is I put a red tag on it and I've put red over this as well so I can remind me that this is a positive because black of course is usually a negative wire so I've just put a flag just so I know that it is not a negative wire that it is actually a positive wire so I'm going to just take this lead off So now the last thing we're going to hook up is the controller for the 12 volt fans. So these two are going to go on the 12 volt side of my step down. And just positive on positive, negative on negative. All right, so I had to make a slight adjustment because my step down didn't reach to my furthest out fan. So, a little bit of adjustment. So, this controller is set up so when the temperature inside here gets to be about 86 or 89 degrees, somewhere in there, these fans will come on. So, I've programmed that. They're not, they don't do that default out of, out of the gate. So, I'm going to test that with a hair dryer to see if they work. So, when I apply some heat to this sensor, the fans should come on pretty quickly. I don't know if you can see or hear that, but both fans came on. Of course, I've taken the heat off and both fans turn off. 
Well, of course, one thing I forgot to do is install the solar part of my solar charge controller. So I will do that. I'm just going to mount this hood. This hood's got MC4 connectors in it, so you can just plug solar panels directly into this. And then these wires will just wire over to the solar part of the charge controller. So I extended the wires on here, but um, I just use electrical tape and splice them, and it's not the best way to do it. I just don't have the other stuff for it right now. So I didn't film it because I don't want anyone to think that that's the way to do that. You want to splice those wires properly. But I just don't have this stuff with me. Um, but to connect these, it's the same way. Uh, you go to the solar side and then the positive will go in here and you just tighten it down with a Phillips head. And so my massive power station has been built. Turned it on, everything seems to be working fine. Now for a little bit of a load test. I've got my Harbor Freight heat gun here. It's 1500 watts. Let's see if it can power a load. Now look at that, it works. So from here, I'm gonna put on the lid, seal it up, hook up some um, solar panels and test the solar panels. Um, I like the build. There's a couple of things I don't like that I would have done differently. Starting with the front, of course, the um, battery switch is off-centered, and that's just because uh, I measured it before I put it on, and it was just cut wrong. So I wish that was centered. It's not a huge deal. Uh, I don't like that the fans are hooked up directly to the battery and not hooked up to the switch so I can't separate them. Uh, that is something I will do in the future. Uh, I don't like that this solar charge controller, I don't like those wires being so close to the top there. I should have made this box a couple of inches taller. I might make a lid that has a little bit of a lip on it to compensate for that. Overall, overall though, I'm very happy with the build. 4,000 watt, split phase, low frequency, pure sine wave, inverter, 10, thousand watt hours of storage uh, can take a thousand watts of solar in uh, it's a pretty good build this will do a lot this will this will run a lot of stuff it's got some casters on the back so it's semi portable once I put the lid on I'm going to put some sort of handle on the front so I can move it around uh, this is not something that's going to be moved a lot but it is designed to be portable so I can move it around a little bit but this is going to be an excellent portable backup system that I can use anywhere. So that's my build. As you can see, I got the lid on now and I painted it. It's actually a slight green. You know, it looks white or cream. Uh, if anyone has any questions about it, please leave a comment below. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to everyone soon.